Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Greenside Up. 6th of March today and I've just checked my phone, minus one degrees. Um, and I'm going to show you um, a couple of the brassicas I sewed. One outside and underneath a coal, a makeshift coal frame, one in here. Uh, and it's just to illustrate the point of temperatures that I keep banging on about. So we're going to have a look at that now. So the temperature under this cold frame is about three or four degrees. Let's have a look inside. And a sewed radish and Romanesco cauliflower in here and nothing showing yet. But no surprise really, it's very low temperatures and this has frozen a couple of times since I sewed them. But now we'll go and have a look inside. Okay, so the temperature inside this soil is about five degrees, trying to get up to six. But in the protected environment of the polytunnel, these are the radish, and these have come through. Because these haven't suffered as much cold as outside, it's protected. And also, if I pan along, you can just see the Romanescu cauliflowers are just starting to poke the heads through. And it's that difference, it's a couple of degrees difference from outside temperatures and make all the difference and it's the protection that you can give your seeds and seedlings early season that makes all the difference to your growing and it should come as no surprise that with the low temperatures we've had the carrots that I sowed in these tubs about a week ten days ago haven't done anything again it's no surprise really but I'll water them if the weather warms up um, they may come through and it's all about taking a punt because we could have had a couple of weeks of wild, mild weather and they could have got going and, and that's all it can take is just a change in the weather and, and on a different year this would have worked you know the last three or four years it probably would have worked but this year because it's been so cold not a hope in hell so to sum up and to, to sort of catch up and get us all back to speed as I say it's the 6th of March today and it's not ideal temperatures for sowing anything, really. I can do it because I've managed to get all this protection together and I've got all this propagating stuff at home and the greenhouse and it's slightly heated against frost. Uh, I have that frost protection at home. and uh, That allows me to get a head start on the year. And because I need to fill such a big plot and I want such a choice of plants, I need to start early. Uh, otherwise I've got no chance of producing the plants that I want. So I've set my stall out for that and over the years I've worked out how to do these things. Now the reason I'm sort of saying, you know, this is what I'm sowing now and this is, you know, I'm sowing this tomorrow and this next week is because I need to do it. And if you don't need all those plants and if you've only got sort of a windowsill space or maybe a lean-to greenhouse at home, you know, one of those cheap blow-away things, you're limited in space and it's probably better in that scenario to wait and if for any gardens if you've got no protection at all if you wait until into April for all of your seeds they will all still grow you'll get varying degrees of success with your crops but if you haven't got that protection for the plants um, you need to wait really and that's the be all and end all I'm just sort of showing what I'm doing and you've got to remember things like tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, aubergines, melons, courgettes, they're all warm weather plants and you could throw pumpkins in there as well and without that warm weather they're just going to kill over and die or they're not going to thrive, they're not going to do well um, and I've seen a lot of people um, on YouTube and on forums and I see it every year people sow too early and then the plants don't do well and later in the season they're wondering why the plants aren't doing so well it's because they've had that check and rather than grow something get a warm day they germinate and grow up and then get a cold day and it stops and it checks them and then they start growing again on another warm day so they've got this sort of stop start staccato growing period better to grow in april one long gradual curve of growing and the plants will thrive and do that much better for you as i say i am only doing it because I can provide that protection and because that is what I need to do and that is what I want to do. So that's the little talk about protection. You can see the difference it's made. I say, take from that what you want, 
if you can provide protection for your plants, go ahead and start sowing. Otherwise, my advice really is to wait until sort of April, really. You know, everything that I've really sown, I've got all my onions and brassicas um, in the other polytunnel, but they're all sort of cold hardy plants, the same as my sweet peas here. Again, they've sat there all winter, no harm, cold hardy. So I get the cold hardy plants out the way and growing earlier in the year when it's very cold. Now, over this next month and into April, I'll start filtering in not, not the most of the warm weather plants, but the plants in between. So I'm going with the weather and I'm keeping an eye on the weather as well as we go along. So you take from that what you will and I wish you all the best with it. <laughs> okay, so over here where um, the new tunnel's going, I've started excavating and landscaping this ground. And you can see I've taken about a foot of soil out of there and it's all being piled up down there. And the intention is to carry on until the two meet in the middle and hopefully it'll be roughly level. That's the plan with that. And going back to over here, sorry, I'm spinning a bit much. Um, that bit of bed, old bed edging needs to come out there. And it's 28 foot from top to bottom there. Whether I go 28 foot with the tunnel, I don't know yet. I've got two 20 foot tunnels to put together and make one out of. So we'll see where we end up and what I decide to do. Bigger is always better, so I'll probably end up going as big as I can. But the plan is to get this bit finished today. And once it's done, I can leave it alone for a week or two and let the rain consolidate it for me. So I've added about a foot of soil down there and that will consolidate down to about the six inches it needs to be, really. So, we'll see how that goes. Right, I lost the audio off this for some reason, but never mind, I'll just overdub it anyway. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much done for now. I've moved and I've dug out soil from the high spots and put it in the low spots, and it is now roughly level. Uh, it's certainly not far away from it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it now until towards the end of the month. And that will allow the weather to get at it. Well, I know we're not forecast any rain for about a week yet, but the rain will help to consolidate it down. And if we get any more frost, the frost will help to break it down. So when I'm a bit more closer to wanting to actually put the tunnel up, I'll uh, come back at this. I'll either break the soil down by hand uh, fork, spade and hoe and claw or whatever or the weather will have done it for me if we've had a couple of decent frosts or I'll just run the rotavator over it and then I can rake it a bit more level and then walk on it to consolidate it down and from there we can start putting the tunnel up Anyway, so with that done now I'll just leave it to Mother Nature with the weather leave it for a, till towards the end of this month or if I can get to it sooner, I'll, I'll crack on with it. Got another bed to make over there, which will be making this start of this next week. Um, lots more seeds to sow, <laughs> tons. Uh, there's always lots to do, and some bigger things that need sorting out down here. So we'll crack on with that as as time allows. But that's it for today. Just look after yourselves, everyone. Please stay safe, and we'll see you all very soon. Till now.